we're receiving too much of the world's critical input. And then what the end result is, is we become rebellious inside, we become anxious, we get worried, we get, uh, we just get all kinds of things going on because we just feel like every day, over and over again, we're being reminded that it just, we're not uh, living up to what we're supposed to be or who we're supposed to be. So now's the time to after you've written all this down and then after you start to look at everything in your life that is really not the truth, now's the time to write down what the Word of God says you should be, or you are. Not that you should be. You're, you're there already. Now, if you are, this is what the Word of God says. The Word of God says you are created by God designed by him in the womb, even before you're born, he knew you. You're chosen. You're made for a specific reason and a purpose. You're made to know God, to love God, to serve him, and to walk with him, and then eventually go back home to him. You're a child of his. Hmm. You're one of a kind. Nobody else like you. I like the way Johnny put it while ago. I am Johnny O, and I need to be the best Johnny O I can be. You're uniquely designed a masterpiece of grace, mercy, and love. Mm. You're chosen, you're blessed, you're broken, you're given. Yes, you're broken. That's a part of the ability, gifting of you to be, enable you to love. Is you got to be broken at times. You are his child, his bride. Every a female male, you're a bride of Christ. You're a disciple of Christ. You're made in his image, and that includes human nature and emotions, our emotions. And you're loved more than you'll ever know you are loved. You're accepted and forgiven, and you're redeemed. By the blood of Christ, who loves you so much, he chose to say yes to the Father to come to this world to die for you. Now, let's take a look at what the Word of God does not say you have to be. I don't know anywhere in the Bible, and Johnny, you can help me out on this, because I'm pretty sure you know your Bible pretty well. I'm all right. All right. Does it say anywhere where in the Bible how we're supposed to look physically? No, not really. I mean, even in the Old Testament, in like uh, Deuteronomy and stuff, there's a couple notes on shaving and stuff, but and but really not not much. No, not at all. No. Yeah. Now it does say it does mention some foods that are you know not good to eat or good to eat, and then they come along the New Testament. That said, it doesn't matter, you know, that it's okay, you know, that was taken away, it didn't, uh, but it's important, though. There were some reasons why they had their full food laws, but I'm not getting into that. But I don't recall anywhere in the Bible it says you need to be so many feet tall, so many feet, so many inches, uh, pounds weight. You need to have this color of eyes, that color of hair. You need to dress this way or that way. In fact, in the New Testament, the Bible that Jesus was talking about uh, when he sent the apostles out, what they were to have the sandals, a staff, but they really weren't supposed to take a suitcase full of clothes along. Mm. And uh, they were supposed to be content with what was provided for them wherever they went. <laughs> and so they were supposed to live a simple lifestyle. Jesus lived a simple lifestyle. And it's and when we choose to live a simple lifestyle, We're happier. Think about all the people out there every day who are obsessed with the way they dress. Just obsessed by it. I got to look this way. I've got to have the accessories. I've got to. I'm. We're obsessed by the outer appearance, and it's the reason why is because inside we've been fed the lies that if we don't have the perfect outer appearance, we're not a person of worth. Yeah, right. I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And um, so there we go with the, what does it say about what we should, it doesn't say anything in the Bible about our education, does it? No, no. It It does say to be a good worker and not to, and to take your talents and to use your talents and to make sure that you don't waste them. 
So education was important in that extent. If you are given a call uh, to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, or whatever, whatever the talent you've been given and the vocation you've been given, you're expected to use it and to make something of it. But it, it's, that's individually, though. What the inner person says, I want to be, you follow that dream. Because if you're not following the right dream, you're, that's going to contribute to your inner struggle and your unhappiness of who you are. Mm, yeah. Don't do things just because the world says to do them. Yeah. Okay, another thing that does not state in the Bible, I'm trying to think what are the other standards that the world... In fact, what the Word does tell us in the Bible is not to conform ourselves to the ways of the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That tells us that. So let's go back to who do we say we are, and it's important that you start writing down truthfully. Like Johnny O, this is a great example that he's given you. It's just describe yourself, and this is the reason why it was so important that I see this this week, because God was saying, as long as I had this inner struggle inside of me, a feeling I was a failure, a feeling of the battle of saying, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that to, ma- you know, to live your life right, to be healthy, blah, 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 that this was counterproductive. Uh, let me tell you, it says, God, give me a way that I can explain this. Explain it? <laughs> <laughs> explain it. That as long as we got this internal struggle going on and we're not in a peace and contentment, we're wearing ourselves out. We're stressing ourselves out. And guess what we want to do when we're stressed? We want to eat. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's counterproductive for me. But at the same tr- is true for anybody who's dealing with any type of addiction. Hmm. Stress, anger, all these negative emotions is what pushes you in the direction you don't want to go in. And there's a scripture that says, he who tries to save his life will lose it. And he who loses his life will save it. it, Now, what does that mean? It means that the more we focus on our self and our life and what we look like, like take the person who's growing older. You know, first you're a kid that's going, I can't wait till I'm, 12. I can't wait till I'm 15. I can't wait till I'm 16. I can't wait till I'm 21. And then as we get older, what do we do? Oh my goodness gracious. I don't want to look my age. So let's see how many things I can do to stop growing older. Mm. Right, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's the color of the hair, whether it's to uh, do th- wear different clothes or make ourselves look younger, whether it's it just, just if our goal is to keep ourselves from looking older, we'll get, again, where the vanity will wear us out. The stress will wear us out. The inner struggle will wear us out. And we'll still, I don't care how many times you paint the barn, the barn is still going to get another day older. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I looked at a picture today of, at a very, very well-known Movie star who's my age. Uh, in fact, it was Dolly Parton, and I was really concerned about her because she's an awesome, awesome lady. And she was there holding and hugging on to uh, a precious special needs child in the picture. But I looked at her arms, and I looked at her legs. She's got a 22-inch waistline. I believe you can tell by the look on her face that there's been some work done on that. But she looks way too thin, and that's not healthy. Yeah. And it just bothers me when I see people striving so hard to be the perfect person on the outside that they they're uh, that they're destroying themselves, literally destroying themselves. And the same is true though about me. When I let my negative emotions take me to the other direction of not having a a better weight than what I have. But to get there, God wants us all to realize that who I made you and the person I made you 
you t- quit trying to conform yourself to the world and be at peace and accept that you and know that that you, I made you that way for a purpose and a reason and a why. And it's time to quit the battle. It's t- and we need to really, really recognize what we're doing to ourselves inside when we have the continuation of the battle within that uh, says you must be this, you must be that. When the person who you are at the right now, it's okay. It's good. Wonderful, special, unique, precious, beloved. Like, I wouldn't trade anything in the world for my co-host out there. Never met the guy personally, but he has been such a blessing to me. And it's, it, this is funny. A friend of mine was saying how uh, he got in trouble because he suggested to someone that maybe you might not want to um, change your looks too drastically. And then here comes the same, you know, they got very upset with that remark. And then he gets the same thing thrown back at him when someone questions him for his eating choices. And he gets really mad and upset. And then when he got really mad and upset, he realized, oh, now I know why the other person got mad and upset when I said what I did to them. Uh, God is really good about teaching us humility. (laughs) That's all there is I can say. So why should any of us look at anybody and feel the need to, oh, you know, you would look better if you did this or that or so forth and so on, other than you really do want them to be happy. And when I do see some people that are going to the extremes with their makeup and their hair, and like I mentioned, Dolly's look, uh, you, do, you do get the love in your heart and concern for them because you know you know that that's not going to make them any happier, and you know that that's not going to make them live any longer, and you, your heart goes out to them. Your heart really does go out to them. So I'm starting to think again, when we're, now we're, we're not to get off the subject of who do you say you are. Some of the internal arguments... I believe that, uh, like uh, uh, most girls especially, we will not feel that I am a person that a boy wants to take out, mm. no matter how beautiful we are. In fact, that, that's really something. I have seen some very beautiful women who are very insecure about uh, if they're lovable, likable, wantable, acceptable. And you wonder why, but it goes back again to what they've experienced in your lifetime, what the world's lies have come at them and what other people have said to them to make them feel like you're not beautiful. But that's sad. It really is. Mm. I want to ask you, um, I know you had a relationship in the past, and I want to, this is where, this is coming from God now. I want you to think about that person in the past, and was there a, something that she struggled with that you wished you could have helped her to understand better? <laughs> oh, oh, you're going to get me in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, if you think about it. Uh, the, the Because everybody's got their inner pains. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got them, and it affects them in some ways, fashion, form, or another. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll get you out of less trouble. What about your mom? Oh, my mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about her all day. Um, no, you know, it's it's funny, you know, because my mother's, my mother's had some sometimes, yeah, and I, I know her struggles pretty well because we're, we're pretty open, and we, we share a lot with each other, um, when we're, when we're struggling. And I know, I know my mother's, my mother's struggled with, you know, one, one thing, and, and she still struggles with this is, you know, her big thing is, is, you know, the kids, you know, she, can you kids just be all right? You know, whenever, whenever anything's that's, that's her one biggest wish is always, you know, just, I want you guys, you know, she wants us as the kids to be, to be all right, you know, and she's always worried about about this or that with us, and it's 
you know, it's mom, you know, it's going to be all right. We're, we are all right. If you just step back and look at it, you'll be all right. You've got three great kids who, you know, are all taking care of themselves or out here doing.